I was pretty young, you know, maybe 16. And I was shown signs around 16. I started to be, I started to see him. Now, understand, when I talk to some of my friends from my hometown, they tell me things that I was doing even before this that I didn't realize. But when I was 16, I started to see signs that let me know what God placed in me and how he made me and some of the things he created me for. So I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to try to, uh, I'm gonna try, I don't know why this story always makes me emotional. I really don't. But I guess maybe because it was the thing that let me know what God created me for. But if you just look at my social media, you'll see that I loved my mother. Like, she was a queen. You get my point. I was around 16 years old. One of my older brothers had gone to the Air Force. He was in Vietnam, I think, around two years. I had a niece that, um, stay focused, wrong. You can do this. So I had a niece that um, she never really knew my brother. She just knew of him. And she just knew that we talked about Uncle Johnny a lot. He was almost like a myth to her at that point. And so um, sent the letter and let us know he was coming home. Fast forward, the time came. So my niece, um, she was excited. She might have been five, six, I don't know, something like that. She was excited because she saw we were excited. He's finally going to get to meet Uncle Johnny in person. So Johnny came home and I'm very close to my, my nieces and my nephew. So my brother comes home and my mom was in the kitchen and she's cooking and he walks in the door and we all go crazy. You know, we're hugging him and we're going crazy and we're taking pictures and the whole nine. And so my niece was in there and she's just staring. You know, she's just staring at him. Uh, and she's watching how happy we are, you dig? And so my mom's excited. And sometimes when you get excited, you don't think, you know? And so Johnny, so he had asked for either a nail clipper or tweezers, one or the other, can't remember. But when he said it, my niece, she says with all this excitement, I'll go get it, grandma, I'll go get it. Turns and she takes off running. Boom, she turns out of the kitchen, she runs down the hall and then she finds what she found and she ran back in the kitchen and she goes, here, Uncle Johnny. And she puts it up and whatever he asked for, she brought the opposite. So if he asked for the nail clippers, she brought tweezers or vice versa, I don't remember. Without thinking, you know, my mom was a sweetie pie, so she's definitely my mom's adorable, but she was excited. And she looked and she said, no, that ain't it, fool. Which is horrible, but for some reason, when I when, when we were younger, that was something that people said a lot. They thought that was like lighthearted, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? So she said, "That ain't it, fool. Those are tweezers. You got to get the nail clip." When she said that, and I saw my niece's expression, I don't even know how to explain what that did to me, um, but. But um, she she was embarrassed, first of all. She was embarrassed, she was hurt, but it's that thing, it's that look that children get when they wanna disappear. And her hand lowered down and she turned and she sprinted out. Now to everyone else, they probably thought that she was just like, oh, she's gonna run back and get the other thing. I saw the look in her face. It was very brief, but I saw it, and it really jacked me up. Can't even explain to you why it bothered me so much. But, um, damn, me still to this day. I'm, I was like 16. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't like, I didn't like how she, how she was affected by it. So I went back to the back. I went back to the back and uh, I went to the bathroom and I and I called her name. She had locked herself in the bathroom. Called her name, she wouldn't answer. Called her name again, she wouldn't answer. I knew she was in there, obviously. So I knocked on the door. I said, open the door, baby. She says, no. I said, why not? I said, open the door. She says, no. I said, what's wrong? And she says, um, Grandma embarrassed me, and 
I got to open the door and I hugged her. And the, the second that I hugged her, the tears came stronger. And so I said, listen, she's just excited. You know, she didn't, she didn't mean it. But the look that she gave me, <laughs> well, what I was saying to her was not penetrating. She was just hurt. She was embarrassed. And it was a combination of I'm embarrassed in front of this new person that I'm trying to impress. And it was also um, I'm, I'm hurt. Like, that's grandma. Like, she, you know, she loves me. I love her. Why would she call me that in front of somebody? Why? You know, so I, um, <laughs> so I went in the kitchen. My brother and my mom used to talk. I said, Mom, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank you for covering me. I said, Mom, what is wrong with you? And she looked at me. What? I said, what is wrong with you? I said, you just hurt, you just hurt the baby's feelings. I said, you didn't have to call her that. You know, I said, she didn't know. She thought she was doing something good. And you hurt her feelings. You know, she's excited about Johnny being here. And she's just trying to help. And you just snapped at her. And she's in the back crying. And the more that I talked, the more I got amped. And I was crying. And I was like, you hurt her feelings. Blah, blah, blah. And she was looking at me. <laughs> I'd never spoken back to my mom before. My brother was looking at me like, what the heck has changed since I went to the dang military? Like, we, we talking back to mom now? Like, he was looking at me. I'm sure he was trying to figure out, do I have any military benefits that can cover this funeral arrangement? <laughs> <Or something? laughs> this brother's about to be gone. My mom was looking at me like, and by the time I got it all out, and I was like, She's in the bathroom crying right now. You don't even realize y'all still in here giggling. La, 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 la. And by the time it got all out, then I came back around and was like, boy, you're about to die. Like, she's about to kill you. So I did the smart thing. And I turned and I stormed out to look like I stormed out in anger. But by that time, I was like, boy, I got to get out of here. <laughs> to die so i got in my little car and i drove off that was i'd never seen myself like that no one ever seen me like that and so for hours i sat by myself and i was like what is that why did i do that that was the first time that in my spirit i i felt how how much i hate to see people hurt and if I can see my niece hurt and address my mother, which was the biggest no-no ever, I was like, what is that about? I had no idea how, how much I'm affected by people being hurt. Well, I was 16, so I go to apologize to my mom and she says to me, you know what? I was about to slap you in your mouth talking to me like that, but you were right. She said, you know what? I wasn't thinking. I was excited. And I, I shouldn't call that baby that. You're right. Everything that you said was right. She was trying to help. And she was trying to impress Johnny. I was so excited. I didn't, I didn't even realize I had done it until you said something. She said, but I love that you went to defend her like that. Although you almost got your whooped. <laughs> and that was that. And it was later in life that it all made sense. That's a big part of who I am. That is a big part of who God created me to be. God will put things in your life. So when he calls you to, to be what he's called you to be, all these things that you've experienced in your childhood will come back and you'll go, wow, now that all makes sense. So ever since I've been in this industry, it's been more important for me to make a living, take care of my people, and to, to try to create ways to help other people and always to share. I love sharing whatever I learn. I love sharing. That was when I realized one of the first signs I should say of when God showed me who I am and what he created me to be. All right, <clears throat> let's move on.
Let's talk about success, the definition of success. The dictionary says the definition of success is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. It's one definition, the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. So if you set your mind to do something or set a goal and you accomplish it, then that's a success. Two is the attainment of popularity and profit. That's the second definition of success. And of course, the third definition is the person or thing that achieves desired aims or attain prosperity. All right. So music was always a natural for me. So that was what I started to focus on. And my ultimate goal was to make a living. I just wanted to make a living doing music. If I could just pay my bills by playing music rather than going to punch a clock somewhere, man, that would be amazing. Just, I just want to be somebody's bass player and make enough money that I can pay my bills just doing music. Well, that happened in the early, in late 80s, early 90s. Um, and I've been making a living doing music ever since. Okay, I've since toured the world with the greatest artists in the world and made a living doing only that. So according to the first definition, I've been a success since the early 90s, according to the first definition. When I look at the second definition, I'm thinking I, I never really cared about popularity. Though I've always had some degree of popularity, I never really cared about popularity. But after that first level of success, I set new goals. I did want to obtain a certain amount of prosperity. You know, I remember when I first moved to Los Angeles from Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, I've always loved cars. And I remember driving through Beverly Hills one day and I was in total disbelief. Like the houses were so beautiful. But the thing that stuck out to me the most, I remember driving up to a light and a guy pulled up beside me and he had a convertible Jaguar. And I thought it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And then I saw Mercedes Benz. Then I saw Porsches, the houses, the cars. I was just like, this is unbelievable. One day, I want to own these cars. I want a house with a swimming pool. I've owned all those cars and more. I own a house with a swimming pool. So in that regard, am I successful now? But tell you the thing, that makes me most pleased about my success. At night, I can lay my head down and go to sleep because I know that in 30 years of being in this business, I've never stabbed anybody in the back. I've never walked on anybody in order to obtain any of the things that I have and that I've always maintained uh, integrity and my character, you know? So these are the things I'm most proud of and these are the things that I feel God is happy with. My mom and my dad are, are in heaven happy with that. That's the, the biggest amount of success for me. I wanna give you seven tips, seven ways to have a mindset for success. And we're gonna wrap this thing up. Um, number one, know yourself, all right? Are you a strong person? Are you timid? Are you easily intimidated? Are you easily persuaded? Are you extra compassionate? Are you too trusting? These are things to know. If you are those things, these are things to know. Often people are extremely talented, but they deal with some of these issues. It's okay. It's who you are. You can't change who you are. So remember this. It's harder to change who you are than it is to protect who you are. Be careful. Pray for discernment. Pay attention to people, watch their energies, watch how they treat other people when they don't think people are, 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 are watching. If you know you're very giving, you're not gonna be able to change it. No matter how many times people take advantage of you and you get angry about it, you can't change it, that's who you are, it's who you're designed to be. So you can't change that, but what you can do is pay attention to who are just takers and keep yourself away from them. Find someone who you know, trust, and who you feel genuinely loves and cares about you that may be a little stronger than you. Let them be your spokesperson when it comes to pursuing things in this business. Sometimes it's good to have someone else speak for you. Do not try to pretend like you know more than you do. 
So many people in this business feel like as you're telling them things or trying to share things with them, they think it's impressive when they go, yeah, I know that. I, I've, I've done that. I know. I know. I got, I know. I do it all the time. I know. Yep. Yep. I already, I already did. I already. I know that that is a, an effort to let people know you're on, you're on top of things. You're this thing, the other. But listen, if you do that too often, that you may be blocking your blessing. Because if someone's trying to share knowledge with you and you keep saying, I know, I know, then they're going to stop. If someone's going to give you 10 tips and you say, I know to the first six or the first four, then they're going to go, oh, you got this then. Well, tip number eight and nine may have been something you needed really bad. So you know what? Sometimes it's cool to just listen to people and go, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're never, never at a point where you know so much that you can't learn. Don't try to pretend like you're tougher than you are. Just be relaxed. Be calm. Be neutral. This is a very important one. Do not make this business a God. Do not make this business a God. This is a gift that was given to you. This talent, this anointing, this ability. It was a gift that was given to you. The business didn't do it. The, the industry didn't give it to you. Try not to ever say things like, music is everything to me. I'll do anything to be a successful musician or singer. The more you hear yourself say that, the more you're going to base your value on the outcome of auditions, the opinions of others, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so don't keep pumping that in your head. Yeah, maybe you would love to do this as a living. It'd be great, it's a great goal. It's not your life, it's not your everything. Um, it's a great opportunity, like a good job in any other place, okay? Uh, don't invest in others too quickly. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about investing money. When I say don't invest in others too quickly, what I mean is this. And there are a lot of people who have uh, ends and who have uh, relationships and all of that stuff with people who can help you. When someone comes up and says to you, I, I think I can help you. I think I can get you in this place and get you through these doors. Or, you know, I work for this company or I'm good friends with this artist and whatever they may tell you. That's a 50-50 chance that they are lying or telling the truth. If you're super, super thirsty for something and they tell you, yeah, you're really pretty. I think I can make you or I can make you a model. I, I can do this. Or I heard you singing. I think I can get you a, a situation, a deal or whatever. When I say don't invest too quickly, what I mean is don't get too excited. Yet, do not give them the cold shoulder. It's just as bad to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody says that. I'm okay. Yeah, right. Sure. Sure you are. That's just as detrimental as it is to go, oh my God, can you? Listen, when someone gives you whatever their spiel is, nowadays it's so simple. Cool. Give me your website. You know, can I Google you? It's that quick. If you go by what they say, then you're investing in them too quickly. Don't just go by what they say. Don't go by what they present. If they're faking and you give all of this, when I say invest, if you give all of these emotions like, oh my God, I met this guy and he's going to help me and this and the other, you're investing. So when you come to find out that he's not real, then it's going to hurt because you've invested. You believe, you you start to allow yourself to imagine. So it, it's painful when you find out, oh man, I got played. You can just go, okay, cool. Thank you. In the back of your mind, mindset, you say, hey, if this turns out to be good, it'd be great. But if it doesn't, Whatever. You gave him a minute or two of your time. It's cool. Know you've been given a gift. Okay? God doesn't make mistakes, nor does he do anything haphazardly. So if he gave you a gift, like I talked about in, in the first episode, once you realize I got the potential, this is a true gift that I have, then you need to understand there are going to be people who are going to like it, and there are going to be people who are not. I don't care who you are. It blows my mind when I hear people say, I don't think Beyonce is that good of a singer. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, what do you do with that? You know? So no matter who you are, people are going to like you, and some people aren't. Be honest with yourself. If you need to work on your craft, do it. Okay, do it. Make sure that you do the best to get to be the best that you can be. This way, if an opportunity comes up 
and it just doesn't work out for you, then you can say, okay, it wasn't meant for me, you know? Because the, the most painful thing is to do an audition or something and you know you didn't give it 100% and you don't get the gig, then you think, oh man, was that my fault? Like, if I, if I was on top of things, would I have gotten it? You know what I'm saying? Um, that way you don't you don't fall into that trap saying, you know what, they just don't like people that's my color or my height or my whatever. So make sure that you you keep your chops up. And if you don't get those the, um, those opportunities and you're, you're prepared when you go, then you can just walk away and say, you know what, that was great. That was a good networking situation. I met some friends and I got a chance to keep my, my chops sharpened. Okay, here's one that's really important. And people don't like to talk about this. I don't know why people feel like you should just, you know, you, you know, just be positive, just be positive, just be positive. I've had a very positive outcome. My, my career has been blessed. I love my career. I love it. God has been amazing. But I'm not one to not address things. My job is to, uh, to, to inform and to protect. So when people avoid telling you that there are haters don't try to skip that there are evil doings in this industry there are haters it's going to happen it's going to happen and what's going to wear you out more so than the fact that you're going to be hit by haters it's going to blow your mind sometimes who the haters are because you're going to find out that you were being hated on talked about backstabbed undercut by people that you thought were cool with you it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and i would not be doing what i feel i'm called to do if i just told you about all this yeah make sure you practice and make sure you warm up and make sure you go here and be dressed nice and be on time and be smiling and that if i told you all that crap and left this out and you did all those beautiful positive wonderful things and then you got hit with this you're gonna want to go i don't know if i want to deal with this if you're not forewarned about a thing, it's going to blindside you. And sometimes things blindsiding you can knock you out of the game. I want to at least prepare you. Yes, you got to um, hone your craft. You got to make sure you practice. You got to make sure that you're on time. And you got to make sure that you're pleasant. And you got to make sure that you're professional. And you got to make sure all of these things. But when it comes down to reality, no matter what, you're going to, you're going to run into haters. This is a very competitive industry. It's going to happen. You know, so I just want you to be prepared. So when it does... You don't think, what in the world did I do to deserve that? What well, happens to everybody? Don't take it personally. It is what it is. When you see it, it's going to hurt. It's going to throw you. Now, if it's someone you don't really know that much, it, it, it won't bother you that much. The part that hurts is when it comes from people that you thought were cool with you. But that's going to happen. There's going to be people that's going to be in your face all the time. Calling you fam, you know. Love you, bro. Love, man. Love. When you want supporters, they ain't going to be there. When somebody else is talking about you, they going to be nodding their head. Mm. Yeah, he does. Yeah, that's true. I, mm. Yeah. Mm. Going to happen. Going to happen. I want you to know this. Because we're talking about having a proper mindset for success. If you're going to succeed in this game, you got to stay in the game. If you're going to stay in the game, you got to know what's going to hit you. Right? It's going to hit you. So when it does, it's going to hurt. Step back for a minute. Shake it off. Get it out. Once God reveals to you who those people are, take that as a blessing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for letting me know who that is now. One less person that I know I can roll with. Thank you, God, for showing me who they are before you advance me to this next blessing because I'm not going to stop. Count it as a blessing. Put them in the slot that they need to be in. When you see them, again, you got to know who you are. So when you see them, you deal with them accordingly. It's what makes you, you. Do not worry about getting revenge. That's a hard one. I got hit with some cold stuff a few years ago. I got hit with some horrible things a few years ago. I watched as people watched me being attacked. Worst attack I've ever had in my life. And I know that a lot of my friends 
saw what was happening. I didn't see anybody step up to defend me. I didn't see anyone reach out to me to say, are you good? Very few. The, the friends that are my friends, are you good? Man, the obedience to not retaliate, to not come to their level was rewarded so greatly, so greatly. I'm, and I'm in a great place now. Get your mind set. Ultimately, know who you are. Know who you are. Know that this is a business that is a platform for you to use the gift God gave you. God gave you. Okay? Never bow down to the, to the uh, industry. All right? You have to understand you're bringing the gift to the industry. You're working together. Nobody's doing you a favor. You're working together. See it as a job. Go do the best job you can do. If, if you can handle the rules, stick with it. If you can't, go to another job. I hope that this helped you. Uh, it's a lot. If there's anything that you have a question about, please inbox me. Inbox me, ask me any questions about episode one, any questions about this, any questions about the industry at all, because I have more episodes coming up. I got a lot of friends that are going to be coming. Thank you so much for the YouTube, Romeo Entertainment Global, and subscribe. Hit the like button. Keep on watching. Entertainment Industry Answers. God bless you. Love you. Goodbye.